let's learn how to make a drop down together with a sprinkle of variables. Let's jump in. So to start off, it's gonna be so simple. We're going to add in some text, click on T and then tap in and just write something. So I'm gonna write option. So once we have our font, we're gonna put it into an auto layout. So shift and A to add that auto layout and let's give it a background color, just keep it white for now. Make sure that your text inside is set to fill container so it becomes as wide as the container that it's in. Leave the drop down paddings, that's fine for now. Now this is how the options in the drop down are going to look when they're not even selected. Let's create a duplication of this to show the hover state. So command D. And in this one, I wanna give it a bit of a background color, probably gonna go with like a light blue. Yeah, so when I hover over it, it's gonna to change to that. And then we need one more state, which is when I press on it, it's gonna to change to a different color. So command D again, and then maybe let's just use a darker version of the same color. Yeah, that's enough differentiation for me. I'm gonna select all of these options and put them into a component set, which means that they are one component with three different variants. In order to do that, I've selected all of them, and then in the drop down on the top right, I'm going to create a component set. Now I need to tell Figma what is the difference between these three variants, right? So you see here, it already says property one, it's created kind of a default property for me, but property one has no meaning, so let's change that. I'll just double click on it and change it to type. Then I'll select my first one, and instead of frame one, let's write something meaningful. So maybe let's call this default. Then I'll select the next one, this is going to be hover. Then the last one is going to be Pressed. You can name these whatever you want, but I like to go with really meaningful names that help me out later in the process. I'm gonna call this drop down option. Now, in order to change between them, we have to prototype them on the component level, which is called component interaction. So I'll go into my prototyping panel, super simple. And then between this one and this one, I'm going to drag a noodle. So let's set this interaction a little bit. The trigger is going to be while hovering. So while I'm hovering over this white one, over the default one, I want the action to be change to hover. So it's gonna change between these two. I like the animation to be smart animate because it gives a little more zhuzh, it's like a fade in and out, but you can use whatever one you feel works for you. You only have instant dissolve and smart animate in this case because it's swapping in the same place so it can't like really move in and out. Um, but smart animate is fine. And then, we need another interaction. So once we're hovering over it, when we click on it, we want it to change this pressed state. So let's draw another noodle between them. The trigger is going to be while pressing. So the difference between on click and while pressing is on click is an instance. It's the thing, it's when I just did the click, something's gonna happen. While pressing is if I keep my mouse down or if I keep my trackpad holding onto it, as long as I'm pressing, that state will remain until I let go of my mouse or my trackpad. So while pressing, let's just see this in action. Okay, that's been like five minutes and we've already done this. And this is most of what we're going to do. So I'm gonna click on F and just draw a frame over here and I'll copy this component. So command C and drop it into the frame. So it's an instance of that component. So I'll select my frame and shift and space to open the prototyping preview. So right now it's not very impressive, but we know that when we hover over it, it's gonna change color. And then when we press on it, it's gonna change that color. So let me show you that I'm hovering and then I'm holding down. You see it stays the same until I let go and then it goes back to that hover state. Now let's make our kind of drop down with all of the options. So I'm going to copy a instance of this variable into here. Probably gonna make it a bit wider. Yeah, there we go. Then I'm going to put this one into an auto layout again. So shift and A to put it into an auto layout. And this time I wanna zero out everything. So zero padding, zero padding, zero gap. And I want it to be a vertical layout. So the next one will go down. Then I'll select my drop down inside of my auto layout. So do that from the layers panel to make sure you're not just duplicating the auto layout, but you're duplicating the item inside of the auto layout. And then I'll just command D Let's have four options, yeah? Now I have Figma AI, so it's asking me if I want to replace content, which is really cool. If I do that, you'll see it re recognizes that there's four things that have the same name in them. So if I wanna change them to something else, so <laughs> it suggested option, another option, additional option, and final option. Um, 
Sure, let's go with that. So um, these are going to be our options, right? Now, if I just put this, I'm just gonna play this for a second. So select the frame, shift and space, just so we see how it's going to look. And you see that when I'm moving around, it's so tiny, but when I'm moving around, you see that the hover state goes onto them and you will see what I mean by Smart Animate being really nice and kind of gradual because it gives that effect. Um, and then when I click on one of them, it does that change into pressed. Now let's put this into an actual drop down kind of environment. What's the width of this? This width is 355 by 38. So let's make another frame and let's make it 355 by 38. So the same exact size as this. I'm gonna give it some rounded corners, maybe five, change the stroke and I'm gonna name this drop down. This is going to be like the house of the drop down where they click on it and then the drop down opens underneath. So like the selection pane, I don't know what it's called. Um, I want this to be an auto layout as well. So shift A, I'm fine with the default values. Now I do want to set the width to fixed. So it stays on 355. Now let's add a text box inside of it. So I'll click on T, drop in that text box. I'm just gonna say select. Um, if you want, you can also add in, you know, a like a little arrow as like a chevron or something like that but i'm not gonna bother right now now what we want to do i'm gonna put this inside of a wider frame and we're going to say in our prototyping panel on click this is going to open these options so when you click on this it needs to open overlay and the overlay is going to be options now, when we use an overlay, it's going to come on top of our design. So we need to tell Figma where to place it. Now, there are some options here, like top left, centered, but I like to use manual when it comes to drop downs because when you use it, you get a version of your overlay here and you can just place it wherever you want. So I'm gonna put it here just underneath the drop down. Now we have an option with overlays to have a background. I think that could actually be good in this situation. So it kind of blurs everything behind it. So let's do that. And let's see that in action. I really recommend when you're doing stuff like this, always test it step by step like we're doing now. Don't just leave it till the end and then ch check your prototype, check it every step of the way. Shift and space, I'm gonna click on select, boom, it opened up and this still works. Now we just need to close it, don't we? So what are we gonna do is we're going to add another interaction to these. So we select all of our options and add an interaction on click, we're going to close overlay. So you'll see that they have two different levels of interaction in the prototyping panel. They have one which is their variant interaction, which is what they come from from their home in here. And then another one that I've added onto the instance itself. Yeah, so it's a bit of a weird way to think about it. Like it has the interactions that it comes from, from its original component, and then additional interactions that we've added onto the instance alone. Let's see if it worked. Shift and space, click on the drop down. Everything here is working. Now I'm gonna click on this one and it closed. And you see that we even went through that pressed state before, right? So I'll do that a bit slowly. I'll, I'm holding down my mouse right now. So you see we're in the darker blue. When I let go, it's gone. So that's it, right? Not really, because the text didn't change. So that's why I said at the start that we're gonna use a sprinkle of variables. So let's do that now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a string variable to control each one of my options. And then that will change what is said here. So instead of select, it's gonna change into whatever we clicked on. So let's do that. I'm gonna go into local variables, create a new string variable, and I'm gonna call it option one. Make sure to use a space between the word option and one. You'll see why in a minute. Let's say the options are different kinds of animals, okay? So cat. Now, in order to create a new variable that's the same kind of variable, there is a shortcut. We can click on the plus here, but we can just select the variable and then shift and enter. And that's why I said use the space, because now it knows it's the next one, so it's calling it two and not one again. Um, let's change this one to dog. This one's gonna be fish. This one's gonna be all the you know normal pets people might have. Um, now let's assign them. Sadly, we're gonna lose our AI options, but oh well. I'm going to click on my text box and then assign that variable to it. In order to do that, it's up here at the top. Um, it's going to be in the apply variable button and I'm gonna apply option one, then hit option two, uh, option three, and option four. 
Now, we need one more variable, and that's gonna control this. So I'll go to local variable again, create a new string variable, I'll call it selection. And at the start, it's just gonna be select your animal of choice. Let's make it even fancier, yeah? So let's assign it here, up here at the top, selection. Nice. Now, if we go into prototyping, what we want to do is we want to add another interaction. So when you click on this, two things are going to happen. First of all, the overlay is going to close, but also add another action, set variable selection to whichever option we're on now. Yeah. So you can add multiple actions onto the same trigger. So the trigger is the user clicked on it. And once they clicked on it, it's going to close the overlay and it's going to change the variable selection that controls this to that variable option one. Um, let's do that for the rest. So if you select all of them actually and click on this, you could do that at the same time. So set variable selection two. Uh, I will do option two and then obviously I just need to go into each one and change it because this one is option three and this one is option four. So it's still a bit of a time saver doing it all together. Let's see it in action. So select your frame, shift and space, select your animal of choice, la da da da, -da. hover state still works, let's select dog, didn't work. Why didn't it work? So the reason why it didn't work, and this is gonna be one of the reasons where variables can be a bit tricky for people. The order matters, okay? So we really need to think like a computer is thinking. So what we've told it to do is close the overlay and then do this, but it's like, I've already gone. So all I need to do is swap the order. I'm gonna select this one and drag it to the top. So first it's changing the variable, then it's closing the overlay. Okay, let's do that for all of them. You can even see that it's changed. So the main action here is close. The main action here is change variable. Let's do that. Da -da. Now it shall work. Open up your prototyping preview, select your dropdown, then let's say fish, haha, -ha. dog. Alpaca. Voila! And that's it. Yeah, we created this drop down so quickly. Now, if you don't want to use variables, which is fair enough, or maybe you have like, you have so many of these drop downs in your designs and creating a variable for each of them is just going to be a nightmare, then you can go the old school way, which is just when you select one of these, instead of just closing the overlay, it will go to a different screen where it's already preset with that information inside of it. It's a bit, it's a bit boring, but it is what it is. Figma is nearly perfect, but it isn't perfect yet. And that's that. I hope you enjoyed. Please leave a comment below. Let me know what else you want to see. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you at the next one.